Hey everyone, Andrew with the Ridgeline Division Shops. Uh, I'm back with another video from the build series that I've been uh, doing. Uh, this time around I'm going to do CP5745. This is one of the Expressway SD40-2s uh, that Canadian Pacific uh, ran. Uh, I've already detailed out the engine. I think in this video I'm going to show decals, uh, how I do decals. So what I'll do is let's let's go over the build real quick. I'll show you. Uh, started with a Cato early model SD40-2. It's got the early style uh, radiator grills. Uh, what I did was I cut off the ratchet brake nose and I added on a nose from uh, the Santa Fe style uh, SD40-2. It's got the headlights on the nose itself. Obviously, it's got the brake wheel and I extended the length uh, to accommodate or to make it a snoot nose uh, as appropriate to the CP prototype. Uh, square sand filler hatches front and back. Uh, obviously the Canadian type bell over the cab window. Uh, pilot details got the pilot plow, the uh, cut levers and the MU hoses there. I relocated the horn to uh, above the dynamic brake blister. Obviously you got the winterization hatch as per the prototype. A couple of antennas, uh, also as per the prototype. On the back, you can see that I have uh, converted to a single rear headlight, uh, so that's just pretty interesting. And on the right rear long hood, there was some kind of uh, little ledge that protruded out. I'm not sure what that was for, but I went ahead and replicated it there. Uh, obviously, going to add uh, photo etched fans on this one. Uh, obviously, once it's painted, you'll see those. Uh, installed. So, quick run through of the build itself. Let me get it painted and then I will show you how I do decals. Okay, so got the painting finished. Uh, red on the body, as you can see, and black from the sill down. Uh, actually, there on the walkway, uh, I still need to go back and play, paint that uh, tread plate black. Um, I usually do that by hand since the stanchions are going to be red uh, and that's kind of difficult to mask off so I'll just go back and paint it by hand. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I decal now. Uh, let me run down the list of things that I need. First off, obviously, uh, decal sheet. This is for the Expressway uh, SD40-2s, uh, one of which I'll be doing here. So we need the decal sheet. Uh, also, I use uh, number 11 blade. Uh, brand new one so you can cut the decals. Uh, I use a tweezer to pull the decals. Um, a little paintbrush uh, for applying water. Uh, Q-tip keeps my life uh, simple when I'm trying to put down the decals. I can uh, whisk away the water that's uh, extra there. And finally I use a uh, Solvacet to get the decal to lay down in place uh, or into the little details on the body itself. I find that Solvacet works very well. Uh, there are a couple of other options out there which work, uh, but I just have a preference for that one. So let me go ahead. Uh, I will start cutting out the decals and I will move some of these parts off to the side and uh, I will show you how I do it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I have a little uh, bowl of water uh, just off to the side here, uh, off camera. Uh, obviously the water activates the decals so that you can slide them onto the model itself. Uh, so what you do is you take the decals, these are the two that are going to end up on the long hood, this X and this expressway. The X will be here, the expressway here on the, under the radiator is kind of uh, tucked in. It's always my suggestion to cut uh, your decal as close as possible to the image itself. Um, I think it's good practice. Uh, a lot of decals, say from micro scale or something like that, uh, come with the decal film that is shaped to the image itself, but sometimes you'll pick up a decal sheet where all of the images are on one, um, uh, one sheet and you actually have to cut it out, otherwise you'll end up with a, a lot of excess um, uh, clear film. So what I'm doing now is I've taken that X decal, uh, I've dumped it in the water, uh, hold it in there for about 10 seconds. Uh, this starts to activate the decal. And then what I'll do is I'll actually bring it back here, kind of start laying it down and wetting the area 
where the decal is going to going to go down. Uh, there are different solutions you can use for this. I am just using water, uh, but I feel like preparing the area by placing um, that water underneath it helps it to settle down. It helps to prevent air from being trapped uh, under the decal itself. Um, now the decal might take some time. These ones actually are ready to go pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it off of the decal paper onto the model. And then what you want to do is pick a point of reference. Uh, it looks like the top left corner of the decal is aligned to that door, to that door there, and that hatch on the door. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use that as a frame of reference, and then align the decal all the way across, and you'll see that the bottom of the decal, sorry about that, bottom of the decal is running just above those latches. So, and actually, it almost seems to fit exactly between the two latches up and uh, above and below. So I'm going to align it so that it's centered between those two areas. And by picking this landmark, what you've done is you've uh, set yourself up to put the decal on the other side of the image in the exact same spot. Uh, make sure it's properly aligned. And that's it. Uh, once you have it aligned, go ahead and kind of touch the areas around uh, the edges of the decal with your Q-tip. And this will kind of start to suck the water out from under the decal. Uh, but don't press too hard because some decals are very thin. And as you go over details, uh, you'll notice that there are latch details under the decal here. As you go over those details, you could end up breaking through the decal. And you don't want to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let it dry uh, just for a second. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the other decal on as well so then I can get a grip on it. And then I will lay them both down around the details on the shell using that solve set. So let me go ahead and figure the landmark for this one looks to be about that door there. So what I'm going to do here, uh, based on the images, is going to be slightly off, but I'm going to put uh, the, <clears throat> the line between the doors right down along the edge of the E, where the, the legs of the E come off. Uh, that way I have it aligned on this side, and I'll know exactly where the alignment is on the other side as well. Now you want to be careful with these long thin ones to check that they are straight, first of all and then oriented straight uh, on the on the body itself so you want to make sure to look down the line make sure that the lines of the body uh, are aligned and you kind of want to step back and see if it even looks straight uh, I see a little bit of waviness in it I'll go ahead and try to get that out Alright, it looks like the bottom of the decal here is oriented to about halfway through those uh, the latches on the shorter doors. Alright, so that's a start there. And then what I'll do, I'll shake up the solver set, open up the bottle, and I will use my brush to apply that setting solution over the decals. Carefully, of course, you don't want to move them because they're still a little bit wet. So you don't want to put on so much that they move, but just enough, kind of brush it on. Um, this softens up the decal pretty quickly. And it'll naturally, as it softens up, it'll naturally set into the... the um, the details on the shell, but you want to make sure to soften up the whole thing. Now inevitably under larger decals like this, what's going to happen is you will get air bubbles, especially around the details that are deep under the decals themselves. 
Um, even here, I'll, I can see that air bubbles are going to form up. So what I'll do is uh, let that dry for a second, and then I'll show you what to do uh, with the air bubbles. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so as you can see there, uh, where's my knife? As you can see here, for example, there's a little air bubble uh, between those two, uh, the two hat, the two latches for the doors, uh, and there are air bubbles forming around all of the uh, the latches under the under the large decal and even under the smaller decal. There, the idea here is very simple. You want to take your blade, make sure it's a sharp one, and make sure to be steady with your hand. Go in and just pop a hole in it. I see one here too, so I'll just go ahead and pop a hole in that one. Uh, those ones I'm going to wait for them to dry up a little bit more. Now that I've popped that hole in the um, in the air bubble, I will actually go back and apply the solve set over the decal again. Let me go ahead and get that. Apply it again. And you'll notice the one thing I haven't done is actually try to press the decal into the details. Um, kind of just let it do it on its own. Uh, at this point, it's not ne necessary yet, and what you'll end up doing is you'll end up stretching and uh, kind of deforming the decal if you try to force it into the into the spots. So take it slow. Uh, don't be surprised if five or six applications are needed to get larger decals um, down into all of the all of the grooves. Uh, but take your time, and it'll get done. Uh, and then, of course, you want to go back and seal it with a clear coat or a gloss coat, and uh, then weather it. So that's it for this um, uh, video. I will go ahead and uh, take care of the rest of the decals on this engine. Uh, feel free to ask if you have any questions, uh, and uh, I hope that helps. Uh, I hope it helps you guys figure out uh, how I do decals at least. There are a lot of ways to do it, but that's definitely one way to do it. Um, yeah, appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.